I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. It's never easy to replace a legend, and I know he struggled his final few years at Vautech, but Frank Beamer, no question, was Virginia Tech football. He was there for about 30 years, and he pretty much did what I thought Bill Snyder did so well at Kansas State. Took a program from literally the bottom and made them nationally relevant, and that right there is coaching. Um, Beamer won several ACC championships, not to mention the fact got the Hokies to the national title game in 1999. So you knew that there was going to be pressure put upon Justin Fuente. Um, of course, around these parts of Oklahoma, you know, we know who Fuente is because he played his high school ball in this state at Tulsa Union and, of course, quarterback my Sooners in the mid-1990s. But Fuente is better known not just for being a real good head coach. Remember, Bob Tech won 10 games this past year and, you know, only lost by one touchdown to the eventual national champion Clemson in the ACC title game. But it's really his development of quarterbacks that impresses me the most. I mean, look, when he was um, at TCU on that staff, responsible a large part for the development of Andy Dalton. And when Puente got his head coaching gig at Memphis, remember a guy named Paxton Lynch? Yeah. Ended up becoming a first-round draft pick. And last year, I thought was influential in the play of another QB. That's Gerard Evans. Evans not only rushed for over um, 800 yards, which was, by the way, best on the team in 12 touchdowns, but threw for over 3,500 yards and had 29 TDs. That's 41 touchdowns for Gerard Evans. And maybe those stats might have led Evans to think that he was ready for the NFL. Because you, you can imagine what this offense would be like this year if Evans were to come back. But he made that foolish decision thinking he was NFL ready. It was foolish because, you know, come draft time, you know, just a few months ago, nobody called his name. So he ended up being a undrafted free agent signed with uh, Philadelphia. You wish him the best of luck, but there's no question that uh, Evans probably got bad advice and, of course, Vautech now has to start over at QB. So, Josh Jackson, we will see if Puente can develop this guy and make him extremely productive. I don't think he'll put up the numbers that Evans put up last year. That's asking a lot for, for anybody in their first year at QB. But as long as he can be serviceable, and this actually might be one good thing for Vautech in the fact that maybe the running backs can be the leading rusher for this team. You know, not the quarterback. If the quarterback's the best athlete, hey, you do what you can. But, of course, every time that QB gets out of the pocket and and runs the ball or if it's a zone read and you haven't run, of course, that injury factor always pops up, which for a QB above all other positions is the one you could um, ill afford the most in terms of the injury factor. So the running game, um, you do return Trayvon McMillan, who I think will now have an opportunity uh, to increase his overall rushing total 676 yards is what he had last year, 4.7 per carry, and had 10 total TDs. And Dalton uh, Keene, who's a freshman, will probably um, see some time, too, in the backfield. But it's not just at quarterback where the Hokies are going to be green. Okay, Receivers. And they lost a couple of good ones. The um, very productive Isaiah Ford, who ended up with almost 3,000 receiving yards during his career, one of the more decorated receivers in Vautech history, not to mention the tight end, Bucky Hodges. These two combined for about 1,700 yards a year ago in receiving and 14 touchdowns. That's production that's hard to replace. So Cam Phillips, who had 983 yards receiving and 13 TDs, um, will become the number one guy. And C.J. Carroll, the second leading receiver coming back, didn't even have 300 yards receiving a year ago and no touchdowns. So receiving might be just as big of a concern in terms of experience than quarterback. Offensive line, the left side is set, and they're going to be good as far as the left side of that line at the guard position. One of the best guards in the country in Wyatt Teller, 6'5", 308 pounds. And you also have at center Eric Gallo. And offensive of tackle, Yosua Nijman. So left side, you're set. Right side, we'll see how that develops. But the thing about Vautech last year, hey, they, they put points on the board, 35 points per game, um, which was in the upper half of the ACC. Um, but we'll see how the running game is going to do. Because remember, last year, your quarterback, Evans, was a big part of the running attack. And we'll see if McMillan now can become 
that factor in the backfield for the Hokies. Now, defensively, Bud Foster, he's been there a while. He's been there a while as the coordinator. And last year, his defense came with it. 22.8 points per game is all they allowed. Fifth best in the ACC. And they got to the quarterback quite a bit. 31 sacks on the year. Big part of that was because of the defensive line. This is going to be... The one weakness this year for Bautic, it was a big strength last year. you got to remember you lost three of the four up front, including Woody Brown, who it seemed like was always getting his name called because he'd make a tackle for a loss or a sack, and you lose Sam Rogers as well. He was picked in the draft uh, this past spring. So on the defensive line, Trayvon Hill uh, played a little bit as a freshman. You'll have him at one side. And the other side trying to put pressure, the only returning starter up front, that's Vinny Mahoda. So defensive line with two new tackles and one defensive end that was not a full-time starter last year in Hill. We'll see if Foster's defense can keep the momentum going. The bad news, again, you're not very experienced up front. The good news, though, is you got everybody back. This is where Bob Tech gets even. Linebackers, all the starters return, and so does the secondary. So I, I would expect, again, Bob Tech to be solid on defense. Tremaine Edmonds, boy. He was a highlight really a year ago. 19 tackles for loss a year ago for the Hokies. And Andrew Motua Puaka, not an easy name to say, but when you see him play on the field, hey, his name got called a lot too. We're talking about uh, a player that had 114 tackles a year ago, leading returning tackler for the Hokies. Think about Bud Foster's defense from 2016. They were very productive when it came to third down defense, and that's because they cranked the pressure. Can they do that this year with an inexperienced defensive line? Um, who knows if they can get that same production. The linebackers are back, but again, the defensive lines, that will be a work in progress, I think. Linebackers, one of the best in the country as far as units. Defensive backs, maybe other than Florida State, best in the ACC, because you got everybody back there as well. Terrell Edmonds, that's Tremaine's brother. He's back, and he had four interceptions a year ago. The other safety or the rover position, you've got Richie Floyd, who um, started as a freshman. The corners, Brandon Fasteson on one side, Adonis Alexander, who will see playing time too. The best of the corners, in my opinion, though, is Greg Stroman now entering his senior year. So the back seven for Virginia Tech, they're set. As far as that line, though, I said a couple of times, I'll say it one more time, the key to Vautech getting back to the ACC championship game will be the production of that defensive line because that's the one area as a whole we really don't know how productive, if at all, they're going to be. Special teams, well, if it's within 40 yards or less, you can pretty much count on Joey Sly, the place kicker. He was 20 of 27 overall, but struggled outside of 40 yards. The punter's going to be new. Oscar Bradburn from Australia, used to playing Australian rules football. Now he gets to play college football as a freshman. Looks like he will be the starting punter. The schedule for Virginia Tech, the opener, pretty intriguing. It's against a former conference rival, and both are in the Big East. That's West Virginia. They'll play at Landover, Maryland, home of the Redskins. Of course, we mentioned it earlier on another show that uh, West Virginia looks like their quarterback situation is set with uh, Will Greer, which is, I'm sure, a load off Dana Holgerson's shoulder. That right there looks like a pick em game. The rest of the non-conference schedule, fairly manageable. The ACC opener, late September, against the defending national champions, but at least you get them in your backyard. And a great thing about the Virginia Tech schedule, no Florida State and no Louisville on it. The other two juggernauts from the Atlantic Division. Bad news for Virginia Tech, you got to go to Miami and you got to go to Georgia Tech back-to-back -back weeks. And remember, the Yellow Jackets with a backup QB went into Blacksburg a year ago and stunned the Hokies. Virginia Tech's got to be careful of that upset bug. Last year they fell victim to it at Syracuse. So that's something to remember. Virginia Tech's Vegas win total projection, 8.5. I'm going to say Virginia Tech wins nine games. Um, defensively, I think this is going to be a solid unit. But offensively, there's a lot of uncertainty at receiver and especially at the quarterback spot for me to think that Bob Tech's going to repeat as Coastal Division champions. Plus, I hate for Virginia Tech's perspective having the back-to-back -back road games against Miami and Georgia Tech. That could be rough. Vautech will win nine, but I think this time they don't win the Coastal. That's my look at the Hokies. Catch you next time.